All right, everybody, uh, a meeting of the Planning and Economic Development Committee is being held this Monday, September 20th at 7 p.m. in the Alderman Aldermanic Chamber via and via Zoom, uh, which the meeting link can be found on the agenda uh, and on the city's website. Uh, Mr. Clerk, would you uh, please call the roll? Uh, Alderman at large, David Tenza. Present. Alderman Jan Schmidt. I am here. Uh, Alderman Tom Lopez. Not here. Uh, Alderman Ben Clemens. I believe he's on Zoom. Yep, we see him on Zoom. Ben, can you hear us? What am I doing? Am I, did I do something wrong? We'll, we'll, we'll give him a minute. We'll, we'll note that Alderman Clemens is here via Zoom. Correct. And Alderman at large, Brendan Laws, is present. We uh, have four members uh, and also in attendance. Alderman at large, President Wilshire. Thank you, and uh, also in attendance is Sarah Marchant, Community Development Director. Uh, first item on the agenda is uh, public comment. I know one is here in the audience. Uh, I don't believe there's anybody else on Zoom. Uh, so we'll close public comment. Discussion by members of the committee. Seeing none, we'll also note that uh, Alderman Klee uh, is uh, in, in attendance as well. Uh, communications? None. Uh, unfinished business? There is none. New business resolutions? Uh, R21-170, relative to the approval of the Imagine Nashua 2021 Master Plan. Uh, Chairman Tenza, I move to recommend by roll call, or final passage by roll call, right? Uh, the is not hearing you. It's not. No. That should be. That's good. Try it now. See if. There you go. All right. Now I can hear you. Okay. So. Yep. Now we're fine. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Alderman Clemens, I just want to verify that you can hear us uh, now and you can communicate with us. Yes, I can. I can hear uh, everyone um, at this point. Okay. Uh, well, the time is now 7.06. I'm, it's not clear to me whether we were recording uh, or taking minutes of the initial okay. first five minutes. I hope not. But So we'll start the meeting over again just because it's in, in due attendance again, if that's okay with everybody. I could use the practice. Sure. <laughs> Alderman Lopez is here as well. No. Thank you. Um, so uh, I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, it's a meeting of the September 20th Planning and Economic Development Committee meeting being held uh, this evening, September 20th at 7 p.m. in the Aldermanic Chamber and via Zoom, uh, which meeting link can be found on the agenda and on the city's website. Uh, if we could please Clerk, could please call the roll. Uh, Alderman at large, David Tenza. Present. Alderman Jan Schmidt. I'm here. Alderman Tom Lopez. Online. Oh, he is here online? Yes, he was. Yes, I can see him. He's trying to connect to audio. He's connecting right now. Uh, we'll, we'll keep a close visual on that. Alderman at large, Ben Clemens. Uh, yes, yeah, thank you. I am here participating via Zoom uh, because of work commitments, and um, I can hear everybody. And, and no one is in the room with me. Alderman Large Brandon Laws is also present. Sorry, did I miss my cue? <laughs> there you are. Alderman Tom Lopez. Uh, I'm here. I can hear and see everybody. I am just transiting home, and I will join you as soon as I get there. We are all present. Thank you. Also in attendance are uh, President Wilshire, uh, Alderman Klee, and Sarah Marchant, Community Development Co Director. All right. Uh, first is a, a period of public comment. Is there, there's no one here in attendance uh, in the chamber. Is there anyone online who'd like to make a public comment? Seeing none, uh, discussion by members of the committee or anyone in attendance? All right, seeing none. Mr. Clerk, uh, communications? There are none. Unfinished business? There is none. Uh, new business resolutions? 
Uh, new business resolutions R21-170, relative to the approval of the Imagine Nashua 2021 Master Plan, uh, I move to recommend final passage by roll call. All right, the uh, motion is to recommend final passage by roll call. Uh, if the committee would allow, uh, I will uh, bring uh, Director Marchant up uh, for her presentation. I'm going to switch over to her. Well done. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, committee, for having me here tonight. Again, Sarah Marchant, Community Development Director. I am here to just give a very brief overview of what has been almost a year-long process in the making um, with you this evening. So the 2021 Master Plan, entitled Imagine Nashua, for imagining the future of Nashua, is before us tonight. And um, what we're gonna talk a bit about is just how the document is structured. Um, we were so lucky to have a, a ton of engagement for the community, which um, created a lot of great discussion and a lot of information. And so this document is larger than, um, than it can be quickly scrolled through, but it is right up on the front. As soon as you log into the website, imagine.nashuanh.gov, if you'd like to go there, um, it's right at the top. There are two options. The two options are simply the single page view versus the full spread of the two sheets together. One is easier for printing and one is easier for viewing. Um, so we'll talk about how the document is structured and how it is made to be a little bit more digestible and consumable, even though there's so much information in there. What we're doing for target metrics and then timeframe next steps um, for in any questions and discussion you'd like tonight. There are not a lot of slides, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> So first, I just wanted to say thank you for the engagement from this community. Um, we did a bunch of different kinds of options from the social pinpoint to um, many, many, many Zoom meetings. Uh, and we did this through a pandemic and it was a very conscious choice when the pandemic started to move forward or not. And the decision was after discussion that what better time to come out of a pandemic than a vision of our future and to help make us stronger. And interestingly enough, as much as it, we had to shift a lot of things and do engagement differently, I really think we reached a lot of people we would not have traditionally reached through the ability to do Zoom meetings. Um, we had the big meetings with you know 90, 100 people on them, but we did many, many, many focus group meetings with smaller groups from everybody from the, um, you know, the senior book club group to our pickleballers to um, our plus company students um, to all kinds of people that we could, uh, many of our congregations um, that we could interact with on a one-on-one -on -one and a more personal basis. And, and I do think that that is some of what gathered a lot of the rich diversity of this project. Um, in addition, we had some social media campaigns. We did do the library in person. We had an, an event outdoors at the library and an event at the Tree Streets neighborhood um, during their block party as we were winding down. But we also did um, some social media things with some of the kids in our neighborhood, working with the Boys and Girls Club and the YMCA and our transit passengers who um, are wonderful at giving us their opinion. Um, which we are very thankful for. So um, this was truly a community effort and there's a lot of information in here. In understanding everything we have um, across the, you know, going across kind of horizontally are the overarching themes of equity, resilience, and climate change. And those go across all six of the topic areas. The six topic areas are defined by RSA, but land use, housing, mobility and transit, economic development, open space and natural resources, and arts and culture. Um, and what you'll see on this page, this is, um, reflects our 10 top goals, what we heard from you, just these repeat themes that seem to be the most important are, um, are reflected within these six topic areas. These are color coded and you'll see these colors throughout the document. And I will just kind of explain how to read the document really quick here and how to go through it. But for example, anything that you see that's in yellow is related to housing versus things that are in the blue are related to mobility and transit. And so here are the top goals that we came up with, the 10 of those. Um, and I will just note, you'll see these little TKs. If you see that um, navy blue bar sticking out of the bottom and it has a TK, 
TK is um, two letters that never appear together in the English language and editors use those because you can search and replace at the end. And so most of those TKs are for page numbers. Once we finalize, we're still looking for comments for all of you. And so all those little TKs are, are in there because there's a little bit more cleaning up to do. So that is out there and we are aware of it um, and it is intentional. <laughs> um, what we heard largely was that um, as we're focusing on redevelopment and our future vision, it needs to be in these areas highlighted. Our neighborhoods and the, where people live in the neighborhoods, people feel like are in pretty good shape. The form of them works. If we're talking about housing or transportation, it's to keep that same form within the neighborhoods, but that our redevelopment efforts and our future housing and some of our future really important changes need to focus and will focus in these areas identified on the screen above. Everything from Beezer, which is um, currently a Superfund, not quite Superfund site, environmental remediation that is almost done with cleanup to Amherst Street, DW, and on Northeastern Boulevard, it's really about preserving future job space and making sure that we keep that as a very much a large lot commercial corridor. So the plan itself is laid out, um, and this is kind of just an explanation using the land use and development. It starts, the first page, the first spread would be with the topic and the vision at the top. And then we go into some of the background data and existing conditions to kind of give, to give context to each of the topics. The second and, and continuing pages then go into the goals and actions and recommendations. And so with each of the goals that have been defined, there are specific actions and recommendations to move forward, which come with timeframes and, um, and priorities with those. It gets bigger, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> the other really important thing to hold us accountable as we move forward was to try and provide some metrics um, about what do these goals translate into? How can we, on an annual basis, look at data and numbers and see are we making are we achieving things as we've laid out as goals are we getting closer to those goals so you'll see this report card repeated throughout the document and this report card has a timeline from today to 2030 and for example if we look at housing we know from the housing study that we need to add 5,000 housing units by 2030 so that first girl goal says there's about 34,000 housing units today so we need to be at 39,000 housing units. And that's something that we can produce on an annual basis to say, how are we getting there? What's important is not just housing units, but also to reduce the cost burden. We've heard so much about housing affordability and how high of a priority that is. We don't know how many exactly affordable units there are in the city, right? And many are just determined by market and not by long-term restrictions. And so to keep an eye on that and to hold ourselves accountable, we're looking at the cost burden. And a cost burden is somebody, a uh, cost burdened household is paying more than 30% of their rent for housing. And this is data that we can readily see. It is significant right now in Nashua, 41% of our renter households are cost burdened and 26% of our owner occupied housing is cost burdened. And so we've set some goals to reduce those numbers by 2030 and hopefully moving this plan forward and doing some of these implementation stages will get us closer to that. And you can see those for each of the different goals, but for the sake of brevity and explanation tonight, we're not going through all of them. To run through one section, just to break it down a bit, I did say it would get bigger. This is housing and you can see the yellow theme, the color, um, going through it. You can see the larger vision and then we go into some of the existing conditions and how, where we are today. And here's some of the data that helps us to understand where we are today and what's important for focusing these priorities and our top goals. We then move into the top goals, which you can see this one says housing accessibility. And here's some examples of some action items and recommendations. One of the actions is to allow denser multifamily and mixed use development um, in appropriate redevelopment areas as identified in the master plan and to improve the supply side availability of housing. 
So that's kind of how the document is laid out in the different topics, and you can see how it drills down and gets more specific at each point. This plan does roll up quite a bit of work that has been done over the past almost 20 years by the town in planning. And so this is intended to have, it has pulled from all these different documents and rolls a lot of that up. It is not entirely inclusive of everything, but it is supposed to be carrying, it carries all of these ideas forward and summarizes them together so that the goals and recommendations are incorporating all of these ideas. And what happens next? Um, the timeline for adoption, you heard the legislation last week. We're here for a quick overview tonight and to answer any questions you have, it could be moved forward or we could um, wait for our full presentation. The planning board has the official public hearing by state RSA. This is the master plan's a bit unique, unlike our zoning changes where you would also hold a public hearing. Um, it is just planning board. So planning board holds an official public hearing Thursday. Um, and UTL, our, our consultant, will be there for the full presentation. Um, we could come back here on the 15th and UTL could come for a presentation um, and then, or not. <laughs> and we could come hoping to be at the Board of Aldermen on October 12th for final adoption. Well, that's incredibly important and we would love to finish this year long project. The most important thing is where do we go from here? We have, the community came out, they told us their goals, their vision, and what kind of a community Nashua should be. And so we need to move those ideas forward and put some of these things in place. Next steps include an RFP for the land use code to be updated because the vast majority of this document is going to be reflected in the land use code and the policies that we put in place for how and when you can build and what does that look like. The best way to implement that is by updating the land use code to reflect this document. And we do have money that has been budgeted for this. And so to move forward with the, how that process will work and an RFP. In addition, um, we have been working, Director Cummings, myself, and um, some of the, the team in planning and urban programs here has already been working on some of the housing affordability that we've heard so many times is a priority. And so we will be um, coming to you next week um, at the Board of Aldermen's meeting with a, a financial feasibility analysis of what inclusionary zoning might look like here in Nashua and to really dive into the data of simply the financial viability of it and how it could be and might not be and all the different aspects of that. Um, and so we're moving that forward in parallel so that as part of implementation, we can move forward with some of these housing steps even before a full land use code update, which would be a process. Yeah, that will take a little time. And that's all I have for you tonight. Questions from members of the committee or those present? Alderman Laws. Uh, thank you. Uh, Director Marchant, that was great. Thank you. Um, very well put together. Uh, my question is, you said that you had money budgeted for it. Is it enough money to cover it or? I believe so. Yeah. Um, we have money left over from the master plan, the original dollars there. So we'll need to come back to you to ask that to be um, switched over to this. But that's why we tried to be conservative and save money in that process. Um, and in addition, we did budget a little bit more. So I do believe we have enough money to do that process. Um, we'll see. It's been a very interesting ride this past year with trying to put RFPs out and seeing what we get back for responses. but. As it's not a physical construction, I am hopeful that we have enough funding. Appreciate it, thank you. Alderman Schmidt. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is stupendous. Uh, the amount of work that went into this is just amazing and it, it's beautiful. Thank you so much. A lot of people are very interested in this. A lot of people are looking forward to this. And a lot of people didn't know anything about this. And I think that getting this out for people to take a look at, I think they too will be very impressed with the, the plans that we, we hope we can implement. I can tell you Ward 1 is very interested in uh, Daniel Webster College. Um, we have no control over it at this point, but we're ready just in case. And it has many options, which is also a wonderful idea. So I just wanted to say thank you and your team for doing this because it's gonna make a difference for the city. Thank you.
Yes, thank you. And I, um, the team, UTL, our consultants, but also um, Matt Sullivan, the planning director, and Julie Chismis, our long range and transportation, have been very essential in this process. Um, thank you so much. And I do just want to point out, we don't have control of Daniel Webster College, but the whole goal here of updating the land use code right. would be to rewrite zoning. So what we heard from the community is what can be done there, right? If we change zoning to reflect what we heard, then we don't control it, but we do have a big say in how it gets redeveloped because the zoning that exists right now is not reflective of what we heard. Perfect. Thank you. Alderman Clee. Uh, thank you. When, when you're discussing the rezoning, you're talking about within those particular areas of that you mentioned, such as Beezer and Daniel Webster and Amherst and so on, what would be some of the, um, the with Beezer, I know um, that's in my ward there, and I know there's been a lot of conversations of, you know, maybe somebody will develop it for uh, just a walkway or a children's play playground or maybe, you know, waterfront type of things and so on. So would you do zoning based on that kind of, the conversations that people were bringing up um, and asking questions about? You would look at towards, towards that, which would enhance the city versus something going down there like manufacturing that could <laughs> dirty the waterways and so on. I know that some of, I, I've had a few calls of people saying, what are they talking about doing there? And it's like, deep breaths. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just want you to reassure those that are listening that yes, you are listening. Yes, we heard them loud and clear. Um, so what would a rezoning look like? I mean, this is very high level and there are certainly a lot more conversations to be had, but the, one of the number one priorities we heard was to preserve that river walk, but have public access, right? And make sure that mm -hmm. it was an asset for the community right. as a whole. Um, it is currently zoned for some very large industrial uses, which we heard from the neighborhood is not what they want, nor is it what the market would do something well with. Um, that's a lot of truck traffic on minimal roads. And so what was discussed and talked about was a way to really preserve the riverfront to continue that access to the Merrimack River, a public walking area, but also a residential neighborhood that looks similar to the neighborhood that's there. Um, and to lay that out in a way that maximizes space, but maximizes access to the river. It, a cleanup project like that, somewhat like the tannery, is incredibly expensive. Um, and to, to leave it all greenfield forever is unlikely to be possible, um, extremely unlikely to be possible. So what, what are our options? And what we heard was that residential that's not super dense, right? We don't wanna see the five story apartment buildings. That's not, what makes sense for that neighborhood, but residential in a designed neighborhood that really could um, that really could work well with the riverfront, which might include some of the affordable housing that we desperately need, but it would be a mix of everything. May I follow up? Please go Thank ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, two of the things that I that I really got one was, and I'm glad to hear about the manufacturing. People are afraid of what was there before will come back and create the same situation that we have right now with the, the leaching into the ground and so on. But I heard two other um, real concerns. And one was um, another area which is within my ward and that's the Walden Pond area where we have the um, easement to be able to create a walkway, but it's really not practical because that part of the earth is falling into the river <laughs> and we really put things so, what they're afraid of is that if, if we did do something again like that with an easement up against the river, that we could have the same situation and then we would not have any kind of walkway that goes through that. Is that being taken, would that be taken, that is, would that be taken to consideration when zoning and, um, and land, would that be part of the land use or that be yes. something separate? That's a great question. So the way that that was done is not how something would be done today. Um, that, that, access to the public river would be put in place first and it would be built as part of anything else going in there to preserve that right up front and to make sure that we know we have what we need. Um, and so I do think um, it, it somehow, you know, th that was, I mean, those homes were built in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And so there was very different practices at that time that have kind of led us to that space and that's not how we would implement something like that today, um, especially where we've heard so clearly from the community that public access to that riverfront and that walkway is a priority. 
we would make sure that that's done up front. Thank you, that's exactly what they want to hear. Uh, Alderman Lopez, I see you have your hand raised virtually. Oh, you can yep. um, So I, I want to thank Director Marchant for her leadership on this. Um, such a long time since we had an update to our previous master plan. Um, it's impressive that we're able to get this move forward in such uh, an effective manner. So I just wanted to express thanks for that. Um, also the, the volunteers for the committee too, as well as the city staff um, and all the people that participated uh, in making sure that we were able to move forward with a master plan that really represents what people see today as possible for tomorrow. Um, and I just wanted to also comment on the fact that hopefully this will help the zoning board um, manage constituent concerns a little bit more uh, effectively. I know in the past they have not necessarily looked at the planning because it was so old or they may have, um, you know, made different decisions than neighbors would like regarding where a business is located or what it's abutting. Um, and hopefully updating the plan will give everybody a more um, better guidebook from which to start. Um, so uh, I'm pretty enthusiastic about how quickly we were able to put this all together, how well we were able to gather input. Uh, and Sorry about that, someone was showing up. Um, and I just wanted to thank uh, Director Marshawn for her leadership in this. Thank you, Alderman Lopez. I think if you switch to that Zoom screen, then I see them. Uh, Alderman Clemens, did you have any uh, questions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, I am good at this time. All right. Um, uh, Director Marshan, I, I have a couple process questions for you, if you don't mind. Um, so this is going to the planning board for a public hearing on Thursday, as you said. Will, uh, will the planning board act on this Thursday night as well? Uh, will they take into account that public comment if, um, if someone says, you know, for instance, well, I think that you're your plan as it relates to Amherst Street or uh, the Beezer property, um, can, can they amend the the uh, plan as it is now? Do they have the authority to do that? They would recommend um, modifications to it and they would make that recommendation to you. Um, they could approve with the conditions or they could choose to table until the more just more information, if more information was needed, they could choose to table then. Um, or they could choose to make a recommendation with conditions. Okay. It is the intention that they will make a recommendation next, on Thursday night, but um, we never know what happens. Sure. <laughs> okay. And um, can I ask, are you aware of, um, are there parts of the, any, any parts of the master plan that there is, uh, I guess some, some uh, you know, concerns uh, about that will be raised on Thursday? Or are you fairly confident given all the input that you've received so far that, uh, that you know, everyone is, is fairly happy with how this, uh, how this documents come together? I believe that people are fairly happy with how the documents come together. There's a lot of diverse opinions and no one pos position or opinion is represented in this document. It is a collaboration and a collection of what we've heard over almost a year of time. So what I will say is it's, it really is the 25,000 foot level. Um, for example, there is not a, um, a very specific goal of the number of new affordable housing units, right? And I do know that some people have asked for that. What we tried to do is base it on the data we have and reduce cost burden, knowing the numbers that we do know, because we don't know the number of affordable units we have right now. Um, so. I would say it's not perfect <laughs> and we're certainly welcome for recommendations. Um, but we do think it accurately reflects what we've heard over the past year um, and how we can implement it and move forward. And it is that 25,000 foot view because there's a lot of detailed discussion to happen next. And next is where we really get into the nitty gritty that I think will have a lot more um, controversial discussions over how to implement these goals. And that's not this document, that's the next. Okay, so so even if the board, if the planning board, the board of aldermen adopt this resolution, um, really kind of the fight, so to speak, if there are gonna be uh, disagreements are gonna be when that, uh, when we're updating the land use code, 
over whether it's something something is owned as uh, commercial or residential, ho however you're gonna right. own them, correct? So for example, if we're looking at density and we, we're talking about density on Amherst Street, you know, and what are the goals, and there's maybe three different ways to go about achieving these goals. And those discussions are gonna be about those different methods and who prefers overall what meets the needs of the community best and those discussions are still to come thank you uh, president wilshire thank you um, i want to thank you uh, director marchant for all the work you put into this as much as i love or hate zoom i think it helped i mean i i think your participation i mean i think zoom like enhanced your participation i mean i know one meeting i was on there were over 100 people on it um, but I don't think 100 people would have come here for that one meeting. So I, I think it actually was to your benefit. You had kind of a captive audience. They were at home. They, you know, so and and a lot of input from a lot of good people. And uh, I appreciate everything you've done. It's great. Thank you. Uh, Alderman Laws. Uh, thank you, Chairman Tenzer. I just wanted to add myself as a sponsor to this. And the record show that. All right, the record shall reflect that you are a co-sponsor. Do you want to be one of the prime sponsors? Or? I mean, if you insist. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Director Marchant. Thank you. Um, so the, the motion on the floor is to recommend a final passage. Is there any further discussion on that motion? Uh, yeah, can I actually get in on Alderman Law's idea? Because I don't think I was able to get my hand up that time. No, <laughs> we we will note your uh, note your agreement My for the record. Also enthusiasm. <laughs> uh, so now that uh, Alderman Lopez is also a sponsor or endorser on the uh, resolution, uh, Mr. Clerk, if you please call the roll. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yes. Alderman Laws. It, oh, sorry, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you. I say yes. <laughs> welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Alderman Tenza. Yes. All right, we have five yeas. Five yeas, that motion carries. Thank you very much, Director Thank you very much. for all your work on that. Thank you. Uh, and all the work that is yet to come on uh, the, yes. the hard work that's coming up. So hopefully all those volunteers show up for the, for the discussion on land use, uh, the land use code. I think they will. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, new business ordinances. There are none. All right. Anything tabled in committee? There is none. Uh, public comment. Anyone online would like to make any public comments? Only us. All right. Seeing none. General discussion by members. Seeing none, remarks by uh, Alderman. All right. uh, Mr. Chair, I may not make it to the meeting on time. It <laughs> appears that my, my blue chariot was not interested in picking me up this evening. No problem. Thanks for joining by Zoom, Alderman Lopez. All right. Uh, if there are uh, no other, no, no non public, so uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn, Alderman Laws. Chairman, uh, I. Move to adjourn by roll call. The motion is to adjourn. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Schmidt. Yes. Alderman Lopez. Yes. Alderman Clemens. Yeah. Alderman Law says yes. Alderman Tenza. Yes. We have five years. A motion carried. The meeting is declared closed at 7:37 p.m. Thank you, everyone. For